Good morning. What an awesome and blessed day. What a beautiful day. It's been a minute since I got to come on here and speak with y'all. Today I just want to give all the honor and glory and praise to King Jesus. Thank him for his rescue, his recollection, and his resurrection. I am thankful today that we have his written word, that we have a place that we can study, that we have brothers and sisters of a like mind and heart all around. I'm thankful that we have places of worship and places where we can come together and give song and prayer and corporate worship and just to be able to be in his presence with one another and give him some well-deserved praise. I, uh, spending time with the Lord this morning and it became very apparent that in this newness and this new age, as some people would say that we're in, we, uh, We need to be aware that things, the topography of this nation and the world are changing. I've been talking about this for a year with y'all now, and so I just want to share again that our congregations and our houses of worship have always been under attack, but in this new form they're really being subtly attacked. That's why the chairs are not full on Sundays, on Wednesdays, on those days that we meet. I want to share something with y'all that the Lord shared with me. And if you're a pastor or a minister, or if you have a congregation that comes and sets themselves before you to hear the Word of God, I really pray today that your ears are open and that you hear what I'm about to say. Because it's not what I'm about to say. It's what the Lord shared with me and He wants me to share it with y'all. We need to quit closing the doors. We need to quit holding the building for ourselves and our only and only our congregations. The Lord shared with me that to have a million dollar building property and a bunch of materials sitting there non-used for five days of the week it angers him it upsets him he does not understand why we close the doors why can we not have a service Monday through Sunday every night people will show up one or two, maybe. Some people can't make it on Wednesday nights. Some people cannot make it on Sundays. If you've been called to be a pastor and that's how you're making your living, like literally getting a paycheck from, my advice is put in some overtime. Put in some overtime. Open up the doors to the church. Have a Monday night service. Have a Tuesday night service. How about have a Wednesday during the day service? Sure, a bunch of people are going to be working. Sure, a bunch of people are going to be at school. But there are some widows, some retired people. There's some uh, indigent, I don't know, some smelly people that live on the streets that ain't got nowhere to go. Maybe they need a space to come and worship and to find God. I don't know, you know. I know here's a really, really strange idea, but how about the Methodist church open up for the Baptist church on Wednesday and then all the Methodists go over to the Baptist church on Wednesday? You know, we've sliced this Christian thing up to these denominations, to these little sects, to these little groups and these little clubs and 
And look, it's fine. Tradition, denomination is beautiful. I love it. The Lord loves it. It's fine. But we can't use that thing to start excluding. If you cannot see that over the last hundred years there's been a division, especially in the United States, in the church. And the Lord continues to show me that one of those ways to break that is to open up the doors of the church. Now, when I say open up the doors to the church, I already know that there's going to be a lot of people out there, a lot of godly people even, with good intent in their heart, say, but, but this, but that, and all these things. The building, <laughs> the property, all that material, it's not yours. The Lord gave it, and he gave it for his people. And so if you're on a committee, a board, a place where you can speak, if you're if the church you attend has a little card with it, when you have to give that offering, you know that money, when you give it over, they have an offering thing. Write a small note in there. Say, hey, can we have a Monday night service? How about a Saturday morning service? How about three services on Sundays? Morning, afternoon, and night. Yeah, but we don't have enough people to support that. We don't have enough uh, funds to keep the lights on during those times. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't. Let me tell you something. He does. He cares for that one. He cares for the one that needs to come on a Thursday at 7 p.m. He cares for that one that wants to come, that needs to come on Saturday because Sundays he is not given Sabbath. And to all of those that are like, well, he should just take off and do this and that. Listen, what you should do is give them the same thing you get to have on Sunday morning. A safe, secure, welcoming spot to worship the king. With like-minded brothers and sisters. With power and Holy Spirit present in his house. If we could just share, <laughs> stop holding it as our precious and the thing that we have and we have to protect and we have to house and we have to look. He gave it to you. He gave it to us to share. I just bring this up once again because as we move forward today, I know of many people that are on fire for the Lord that have a passion I have a bubbling over that they're looking. They're actually pleading for spaces to stand and to perform and exhibit deliverance ministry to those that need it. There are those that have been called to lay hands on the congregation to cast out devils and wrong spirits in the name of Jesus Christ to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to move forward in the congregation and share life experience, testimony, power, love to give of oneself fully and I'm here to say that the Lord has told me and we are to share. So I don't know. Think outside the box. Think radical ministries. If I'm serious. This right here would blow. <laughs> this would change everything for us if y'all would hear this message. Listen, on Wednesday night, if all the Methodists <laughs> went to the Baptist church and all the Baptists congregation went to the Methodist church and had their service do you know the amount of <laughs> it would eradicate so many falsehoods lies misconceptions um prejudices um absurdities uh assumptions um <laughs> like it would just shatter all these uh, yeah.
you know, for me, it's very strange to be under a calling of non-denominationism because it's more of an all-denominationalism and it's very hard to be out here and to see the awesomeness in each tradition to have clarity for each individual in each form and then to be excluded <laughs> trying to fully give of oneself in each one. I've been blessed to be called to many denominations, to the pulpit of many denominations, to be able to share testimony in the Word and what the Lord has given me, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, you know, we are called to be ambassadors. We are called to be somebody to bring a bridge between two different people and so whether that be sinners and saints or that be a Baptist and a Catholic or a Methodist and a Presbyterian you know and all of that I think we need to remember once again that we are his we are Christ we are Christians we are believers we are redeemed and so in that, we are one another's. If we are his, we, plural, if you're the father's and I'm the father's, then we are one another's. And so I think that we should just learn the art of sharing, even in the pulpit, even in the congregation. Like I know that in this time, fear and predation and Anxiety are at an all-time high, and they plague even the pastor. They're always present. So I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you. I plead the Holy Spirit come and enter in and protect. And I pray that this message finds good ground. And that people understand that there's people out here that are unwavering in their understanding that we are all God's people. And that denomination and tradition do not set us apart, but they only elaborate the depth and awesomeness of the king that we each serve. I say it like that because we try to continue to put him in this little neat and cute cuddly box, cookie cutter cushion box that says, this is this, this is this. And he continues to come millennia after millennia, eon after eon, and show us that I'm not only that, but I'm this. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yet he comes and does a new thing. That is the king that we serve. <clears throat> and so if you have the opportunity and the blessing to be given, the opportunity to house a portion of his people for a period in time to give credence and worship to the king, King has given me credence today to come and tell you to move, to say yes, to enter in. These radical forms of love where others don't understand. You know, I've met a really awesome chaplain my last Emmaus Men's Walk. And, uh, you know, we were talking and he was talking about that at his unit that he was assigned to, that there was no pastor for the Muslims or for the 
Buddhist or for the other than uh, religions that did not put Christ Jesus and Father God first. And they couldn't have church. And so he stepped up and had to come in on Saturdays, Tuesdays, whatever their day, their Sabbath per se was, and open up the dorm and give them a chance to worship. To me, that is a sign of a true Christian, a sign of a true priest. See? Because what we don't know and what you don't understand is while doing so, they're looking at you. They're looking at the man of God, the Christian, and they're wondering, who and what is this? God, that allows his people to come and do this for me. And every other religion would have never done so. And so... I want to have a heart that does that. I want to have a heart that gives to the point of when the Lord says, even if it isn't the right thing or whatever the world says, but if God says, go, then I will move. And I will share all that he has given and hold none of it for myself. For he is worthy. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Love you. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me share this message. May it find its intended target, the heart, and may it pierce through. In Jesus' name. Y'all go forward and share. Open up the doors of those churches. If you're in a position to bring this up and to say, please do. And by the way, if you need someone to come share a message or start a Bible study or give a testimony or on a weird day like a Monday night or a Thursday or Saturday morning, call on me. I have a group of individuals that are willing to give of themselves for the king at any given minute. Someone will say yes. We're willing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Lord Jesus, we come to you today giving you all the honor, glory, and the praise today, Lord. I just pray for each and every pastor, each and every assistant, associate pastor, for all those that are on boards, for secretaries, for all those that work at a church, Lord, for their employment is at a church, and they have been filling the deadness and the quietness in those church houses. I ask, Lord, for life. I ask for an abundance of people. I ask for floods, parades of people, Lord, to not just come through the doors, but to sit and stay for a while. I ask for congregations to be filled, Lord, and I ask for change to be the word of the year, solidification and change. That uh, your Holy Spirit comes in and does its work and that it stays. We give our whole entirety to you, Father. We give our families to you and we invite the Holy Spirit in. We ask that it do its job. And we ask that you make us willing vessels of your entirety. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go forward today in power and love and in peace. Carpe diem, seize the day. Greatness requires more. I love you, Jesus. Amen.